Hello and welcome to today's episode of Founder Life. Today we are joined by the lovely Robin Drummond of Robin Drummond Fitness. Um, Robin talks about her journey from leaving school with no qualifications to starting a college course on a whim, taking a student loan and investing in a PT course which eventually led her to set up her own fitness business during Covid. So let's hear from Robin. Hi, I'm Cheryl. And I'm Dan. And welcome to our podcast. Where we talk to real people about real problems in real situations. Grab a cuppa while we talk founder life. Hello and welcome Robin to the podcast. Hi guys, Um, thank you for having me. Can you just start off um, by introducing yourself a little bit, who you are, what you do? So I am Robin, hi, and I currently run Robin Drummond Fitness, which is an online health, nutrition and exercise, well, a new app at the moment, which is amazing, um, helping women overcome the challenges that they face with their body image, nutritional struggles, and find an exercise that works really, really great within their busy lives. So that's currently what I'm up to. Oh, and you have, you mentioned it there, you literally just launched your new app as we're recording, just launched it, which is really exciting and a massive, I know you've been working on it for a long time, so a massive well done to start with. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got, how you got to where you are today? So where, from baby Robin, where did you like go to school, grow up and then get into the health and fitness industry? Okay, so I'm originally from Glasgow, so I actually live over in Fife now, and I'm I've lived over here for ten years. So when I lived in Glasgow, I was not an angel child. <laughs> <laughs> I was not an angel, and which is very interesting because I've actually now, like you know, fast forward, actually got an ADHD diagnosis, and I wish someone had. Wish someone had identified this in me when I was 12 and rogue and raj. So, you know, I was over in Glasgow and I was one of those typical kids that I suppose was going down the wrong path and um, never really paid much attention to school. I loved doing the opposite of what everybody said, which is quite comical. And um, literally left school with not a single qualification at all. I then moved over to Fife and and I suppose I'd always I'd always been very, fairly like active. I did like sport. It was one thing I loved. I loved PE in school. It was the only thing I actually really ever paid attention to. And I loved being active. So I did fencing, which is quite like abnormal. Like a lot of people don't realise I did fencing like the sport. And I did that for 12 years. I thought I think I started it when I was six. And it was my uncle that got me into fencing. And I was, I guess, I guess this phrase makes me feel uncomfortable, but I was actually really good at it. And um, I fenced for Scotland, basically, up until I was about 16. So I was really active, and it was the thing that I loved most was doing sport. So that's kind of was what I was most interested to like into when I was wee. And I always said that I wanted to grow up and be a sport coach. So interestingly, there was a love for fitness, exercise and being active when I was younger, which was quite cool. But then never really did much about it. And I suppose we never really come from, I suppose, a, a kind of like a great background. Like, you know, we never had money. We never had a big house. We never had really anything. So for me to like want to pursue a career in fitness was quite challenging because these things do come at cost. So anyway, fast forward, moving over to Fife, um, same situation again. I moved into fifth year and I don't know what the English equivalent is to fifth year or sixth year, but it's the last two years of school. And you just do not want to join a high school on the last two years because everybody has friends with each other. So anyway, I didn't last very long and I left again. So I failed all my hires. So at this point, still not a single qualification, still not a single hire. And I had absolutely no direction or sense of like what I wanted to do or how I would ever be able to do it. And I just woke up one day thinking, right, I'm going to go to college. I think I just need to go to college. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. And the really interesting thing is, 
I'd uh, got accepted to do a business and accountancy course. <laughs> I'd actually done a whole, I think I did a whole three months in business management and accountancy. If only I'd listened in business management, if only I'd listened. <laughs> But what happened then, which this was, this was where fitness was born for me, which was incredible, you know, and even to this, to that point, I was just working in Nando's and McDonald's and I was just, you know, working around restaurants and um, I'd actually got myself quite a good job and I was an event supervisor in Edinburgh, fantastic George, I met David Attenborough um, and George Clooney um so yeah really cool people so it was, a, it was a really good job for the person that wanted to do that job you know it was really good and um I got a loan from college and I'll never ever forget that this this phrase is something that carries stays with me now I took the student loan and was like, oh, this is great. I've got three grand of money. Like, what am I going to do? Like, I must have been like 16, 17, been like, oh, I've got three grand. And a normal person would not spend it on a qualification. They'd be like, right, let's go out, you know, let's go out and spend it, buy nice things. And I was like, no. I remember that's that's how I was able to buy my PT qualification. And that's where it all started was because I'd accidentally applied to a course I never wanted to do because I thought I had to do it with absolutely no purpose or sense of direction at all. And I'll remember that this woman had turned around to me and was like, fortune favours the brave. It was actually episode one of my, my podcast. Um, and I love that phrase. And that's exactly what I did. I just took the risk and I just, I went for it. And I, that's what, that's how fitness was born for me. And that's kind of where it all kind of started. Do you say about wow. normal people wouldn't take that money and put it into a qualification? What? Yeah. What drove you to make that decision? I remember being on the bus and I remember applying to do like, I I used to see all these things on Indeed and it was like, you still get them. It's like when companies will say, oh, like we can give you these free like scholarships or free places and it ends up actually being like, you know, a three grand course. So I just, I knew that I'd already kind of like saw interest in these and then I got the devastating phone call after to be like well actually you can be a PT but it's going to cost you like two and a half grand and I was like really devastated by it Mm -hmm. so I think what got me to this point of knowing like where I wanted to like what I wanted to do and how like how I knew it would cost so much money is if it wasn't actually for me my partner who I'm still with this was 10 years ago it's like he took me into the gym I remember and I'll never ever forget (laughs) The first time we went to the gym together, horrific. You just do not want, when you have just met a boy, you do not want to be walking in the gym for the first time, knowing that you're going swimming afterwards together. That's not a good, comfortable position to be in. <laughs> and I remember being in the weight section of the gym and any any woman, like girl will know, like it's not a nice place to be. And I was so terrified. And I was, I was so upset by the whole experience that I walked out and I said, I never want another woman to feel the same way that I did in that moment. And I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew I really wanted to help people. And I just couldn't find a way to do it. And I suppose that then, like, fast forward to getting the student loan and when I was able to make that decision, I just I just knew. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And the fact that the course was two and a half and the loan was three grand, it just made so much sense. It just felt like it was made to be. And, uh, and yeah, I'll just never forget when someone said, fortune favours the brave. And um, so far, that couldn't be true. <laughs> I like that. I like that. There's a real purpose there, isn't there? From the fact Absolutely. that you walked in that gym and how you felt, and you don't want others to feel the same. And it always helps when there's purpose, doesn't it? A hundred percent. It definitely does. And then, obviously, you trained as a PT, and you did a lot of um, competitions yourself and things, didn't you? How did you get into all of that? For me, I think. I suppose I carried a lot of like body image and self-esteem problems from a couple issues that thankfully I left behind in Glasgow that things happened in my life that made me feel a certain way and when I then became a PT it was very hard because you're up against this constant like pressure to look a certain way or to to like you know 
be shredded with abs or like big muscles or be really thin and and even I think as well like being kind of 16 17 at the time that's kind of when Instagram was a new thing so you know you were constantly seeing other females like all the time I I think women's Instagrams are even worse than men's. I've seen Liam's and women's are worse. And our explore pages are constantly hounded with images that make you feel that, oh, maybe you're not enough or maybe I should be thinner or maybe I should look a certain way. So I think that like already had the pressures of that as a young female coupled up with wanting to be a PT or just qualifying as a PT and then feeling the pressures of that. So, you know, you're already or I already had that underlying, like, I'm not enough self-esteem body image problems as well as. So I thought, well, my my easy way out of this is if I, you know, do a bodybuilding show and I'll get really like lean and I look really good. And and I honestly thought this was going to be how I was going to get so successful was like having a body like that. If I showed it online, people would really respect me. I would be like these girls, I'd have lots of followers and it's the complete opposite. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm officially three stone heavier than that time in my life and I've become more successful by just truly being like me. So I'd done two bodybuilding shows and it was the most horrific thing I've ever done. <laughs> the most horrific, don't ever do it. It's the worst thing that'll ever happen to you. But... For me, it was one of the best things really that ever happened because if I had never gone through those experiences, I would never have developed disordered eating patterns to understand the knowledge of how to help people. So that now gives me that position to help people avoid those feelings, avoid like, you know, feeling that way and how to overcome body image problems, how to improve their nutrition the real way. So albeit at that time, that experience was really horrific for me personally. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't be able to help people the way I could do now. So, yeah. I definitely believe that you have to go through some things sometimes Oh yeah, to, to come out the other side and then use that to continue with your life, don't you? Help other people. And that's why you go through those things, as horrible as they are at the time. There's a reason for it. A hundred percent. And I know that the good thing is now, I suppose 10 years later, is that I'm in a position to know why all those things happened to me and what I've really, really strongly gained from them. And yeah, absolutely. And I'm so and I'm really am thankful for those experiences because they have absolutely shaped me as a person. But the thing is as well, I've worked with I've worked with two unqualified coaches and I think I was just so naive like I just I wanted to do anything and everything to be or to try and fit a mold that didn't exist and it was only me that thought that like other people didn't think that I suppose along the way there was comments you know I've always like I did fencing you know anyone that does fencing is naturally going to have more muscly thighs than most people and as a woman we don't like our thighs anyway like everybody every is always like moaning about our blooming thighs so you know there was a couple a couple names along the way that does make you doubt yourself but not anymore um but yeah very very grateful for those experiences that did shape you know the knowledge that I can help people with now for sure did you find when you're doing those bodybuilding like preparing for the bodybuilding stuff that there were some very very unhealthy habits in that Oh, 100%. I would only say it is unhealthy habits. Like, it is not a way of life. I suppose a quick disclaimer on that is there is people that that is their life. Like, they are happy to do that. Like, that is a, they, they class it as a sport. Like, that's what they want to do. But I guess the difference, I suppose, is having that understanding of what it is before you're even going into it. I suppose I wasn't. And for me, it was more like, this is going to change all my problems. And someone then was facilitating that, thinking, okay, so so I only thought this is what's going to help me get to that end goal. And then I was going to be fine. It was going to fix my problems. So that's where it was different for me. Um, but yeah, 100%. So like noticing a lot of disordered eating patterns, like this is, this is quite, it's comical now, but scary at the time, that like on the run up to the, I think it was the first show, we were driving down to St Albans. I'll never forget it. So all the way from Fife to St Albans and my little Corsa that was definitely going to break down. <laughs> like this little, this little Corsa that should never have been able to drive 
48 hours that day <laughs> and we're just on our way to someone's like totally naive as anything now I had to drink about so obviously everything I'm saying right now nobody should ever do this or this is not recommended advice at all <laughs> um but I was drinking about seven liters of water that day seven liters of water I, I, so just that day so basically they call it water loading and then basically um that night I had to book a hotel that had like a like a spa facility honestly this stuff makes me cringe so badly and um like I had to go for a sauna and then drink a lot of white wine to then dehydrate myself like very quickly and then by this point of the show, like you hardly eat anything. So like you're eating like well below a thousand calories. So could you imagine like less than a thousand calories? I'm now steaming on white wine. I'm definitely dehydrated from being in the sauna. <laughs> and um, it was just absolutely crazy. So what came off the back of that is that I had not eaten normal food for weeks. So I'd eaten like chicken, broccoli, rice type behavior. So I remember the second night we were like, let's get a Chinese. I literally couldn't keep the Chinese down because I'd never, I've not, I'd not been used to eating anything that wasn't chicken, broccoli, rice. And I was so, I was so unwell because I'd eaten something, not that Chinese food is normal, but like, well, it is. <laughs> we should all eat Chinese because Chinese is fabulous. <laughs> now Chinese is fabulous, but like normal, you wouldn't just be sick after eating a Chinese. So and that was it. That's when all the disordered eating patterns came along post-show. Like, I didn't like the way I looked. I was gaining weight rapidly. I couldn't eat food without thinking I was doing something bad. So it was really, really, the unhealthy habits then really did come off the back of that show. Yeah, it was awful. So, but thankfully, all that is completely fine now. Well, that's good. How did you kind of pull yourself back out of that? Because I can't imagine that would have been easy, having those struggles in your head of, do you know what I think was the biggest thing for me that really really fixed all this was actually creating like going the the self-employed journey of creating Robin Drummond Fitness was where I think this really cured a lot of this for me it wasn't even before that so that's only three years I've been doing this and I would say that I definitely up until that point still like for example if I was actively trying to lose body fat and I had like say for example a chocolate bar like my head would be telling me like you know why are you doing that you're such a failure like you're like you know still associating food that way and I would say this only changed for me when I started teaching it to other people to that scale and I think because when I worked within the gyms you never really got a good opportunity to teach this as such because your your main role was exercise whereas nutrition isn't taught a, a lot so I think the biggest thing for me really was actually through RDF and teaching that was what really, really helped me, again, like to overcome those struggles, which in turn was helping other people at the same time. So, yeah. Do you believe quite a lot in the fact then of, to a certain degree, you are what you eat? You, from a nutritional point of view? I suppose, yes and no, because... Mm -hmm. I suppose that what I tend to teach is quite a flexible and balanced lifestyle anyway. So I think that most women that I work with is are very fat loss driven. And I think that coming from a background in fat loss, that where I could only eat one sided. So let's just take the really good or the, the perceived good side of that, which was, you know, lean meats, like veg, chicken all the time. And that was it it didn't give me space to understand how to eat foods that society deemed as bad and feel okay about it. So there's nothing actually wrong with having food that society deemed as bad. So for example, like chocolate or having a Chinese, for example, those foods actively don't just make you gain body fat. They don't do anything for us unless we eat in excess of something. So I think the really important thing is, is actually having the knowledge of being able to do both. And I think that I suppose then if you did, you are what you eat in that sense. It's like if you have that really nice balance approach, then you are going to feel balanced about yourself. You are going to have a good mindset around food. Um, but I think anything one-sided, I suppose, yeah, of course, if you eat in excess of not fantastic food all the time, it's not going to benefit you. But then at the same time, if you restrict that, what's better and what's worse? 
do you know? I was eating deemed the best food that I physically could, but ended up creating really bad disordered eating patterns. And so I wasn't healthy. And then flip that on the other end as well. Do you know? So I think that that's what's really important now is trying to help people find that sweet spot of being able to do both and understand that it's okay to enjoy the finer things in life. Like gin. (laughs) (laughs) It's, It's that balance, isn't it? And I guess that balance is a theme that runs through so many areas of our lives, isn't it? But it's then reminding ourselves that it's okay to be balanced and have, as long as it's, yeah, healthy balance, then it's okay. One thing I always kind of think of with that sort of thing as well is when you say about eating different foods is, yeah, you know, people talk about all these different diets and whatever else. But the one thing that kind of brings me back, not just with exercise or anything, but as a general kind of philosophy, it's... I've had people say to me, oh, I don't eat carbs. I've lost lots, I've lost loads of weight. Uh, I don't eat this and I've lost loads of weight. Well, actually, I've gone vegan. I've lost loads of weight or whatever it is. The actual reality is, is you just eat less calories than you expend. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not your diet. <laughs> so it is that. But it comes back to balance, doesn't it? It's not what you, you've restricted yourself to something, have no balance, and you think you've gained something from it. But you haven't. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened to me is that I spent so long restricting myself of so many things and that's the detrimental effects of doing that. So, you know, like, I really, really, I restricted a lot of things. So, like, even to the point of, like, my social life. So I'll never, ever forget when I knew that this was bad was when it was my granddad's 60th. So, like, some of my family lived down south, well, south to me, um, down near you guys. And um, I then, I didn't actually go because... I was like, no, I can't. Like, I'll, I'll end up being too enticed to drink alcohol or do this. So I actually didn't go to my granddad's 60th party <laughs> because I was competing for a show. And that's when I was like, wow, this is so out of control. Um, But, yeah, so thankfully those healthy ha- – well, he- those habits no longer exist. And um, it's all about creating new healthy habits, absolutely. Hmm. I – I'd like to ask you about something else that you said about um, you, you joked at the start about you started with a bis- uh, business management and accountancy course and said you should have paid attention more. <laughs> yeah. on that? <laughs> so I would obviously only apply to college for something to do. I think that this is a thing like I was I almost feel I feel like when I was a kid, you had to follow this pathway of like, you know, um, certainly like the standard, like, you know, get hires or like whatever the equivalent is and go to uni and, and do this and follow this pathway. And then you'll be really successful, like by following that pathway. And I could not have done anything further than that pathway. <laughs> like, like I have done everything in the complete opposite direction. And that's the funniest thing about it. And I only apply to do that. I don't had didn't have any agenda. I had no plans post that course. Um, and what's very interesting about that is that I suppose from that angle of paying more attention is that I never turned up. I didn't want to be there. I couldn't learn in that environment. And I think that that's when it's really interesting now. Two years, two years ago, having now have like got an ADHD diagnosis is that a lot of the stuff that I was trying to fit myself into were not appropriately designed for my the way that I like to learn. Because interestingly, I then went and did my open uni degree and passed it with a 2-1, like, because it was on my terms and I could learn it the way that it was deemed suitable for me. So I did end up getting a degree, but it was the way that helped me as opposed to me trying to fit into boxes that I couldn't, like, I couldn't do. But I had no, I had no intentions of ever really I don't know what I was going to do with business I had no idea I was doing it because I thought that I had to do something and not just work in Nando's for the rest of my life albeit there's nothing wrong with working in Nando's because you get free lunches and that's really good <laughs> I love Nando's I love <laughs> Nando's as well so like <laughs> so so yeah I suppose um that's really you know I think now looking back running a business it's probably like, oh, that would have really benefited me <laughs> to actually learn about business. Because now I'm now 
you know, run on my own. So that's quite funny. Spoiler alert, you don't actually learn how to run a business in business school. <laughs> Well, well, not on the course I did anyway. <laughs> that was all about the theoretic. The, uh, I can't even say that word. Theoretical side of a business and just in time and all these different last, last in, first out. I do, these are all the things I remember from my business course, which have no bearing on my business whatsoever. So it's interesting, isn't it? Just a shout out to our sponsors, Zero, who I believe are the best accounts and software out there for small businesses and one of the reasons is due to payroll and payroll traditionally is really horrible hard task not made easy by some of the um, softwares out there zero makes it simple and easy for you to run your payroll and pay your staff check out zero today at zero.com that's zero with an x x e r o dot com i didn't really learn anything i did my open year degree that was great, actually. I really, I really enjoyed that, and that was three years, and I managed to stick at that, which was good. Um, I think between leaving to do my PT, well, again, another incredible lesson that I'd learned in my life. So I'd had that incredible job as an event supervisor, and um, as I say, it was in George Street in Edinburgh. It was fantastic, and um, once I'd done the first part of my personal training diploma, you are then eligible to work in a gym. And uh, I remember, had I, I, I don't know what would life would look like if I hadn't ever got this opportunity, but I just trained in this gym and I remember being offered a zero hour contract to start in this gym. But I had a really good full time job working for a really good company in George Street in Edinburgh. And I thought, my family are going to think I'm crazy leaving this amazing salary role for a zero hour contract in the gym. And I'll never forget texting my dad, being like, I don't know what to do. And he was like, leave the job, do it. And I was like, this is amazing. And that's what's really good. My dad's always been like that. He's always been the do the risk, take the risk, just go for it. You never know what's going to happen. And I think like, you know, college taught me that. I took the loan. I just went for it, trusted my, you know, intuition there. I'd quit that job being like, you know, full salary. Bye. <laughs> it's like, oh well, oh well. We'll see what happens. Let's take a zero hour contract. You know, and 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 yeah. Thankfully, that's the facility, the gym facility that I end up being with for five years prior to being self employed. So I'd actually been hired for that zero hour contract with not a single qualification behind me. My only gym experience was my own, like going to the gym and I was given that opportunity. So that's kind of where it really took me up to then just working within the leisure facilities for five years before the pandemic. And then the pandemic came. It did. And very interestingly, I was very late to the party with the whole online training because I was like, I'm not doing it. I was like, there's no way I can do online training. I'm not doing this. I end up texting my previous employer, being like, my anxiety is too bad. Interestingly, I'd also been, so I took a part-time job role within the NHS. Again, not many people know this. I'd worked for the NHS for part-time as well as self-employed fitness classes. And um, again, this is what's really interesting too, because I failed that degree. <laughs> Like, I literally can't I literally cannot study that that way it does not work and I'd worked with the NHS to do a phys, to be a physio assistant and I really really loved that job role but it was January 2020 when I just got accepted for the job and I was like yeah this is great I'm going to be a physio assistant can't wait two weeks later we had posters on the door to say that something had arrived from like China and we were like oh yeah it'll be fine it's totally grand <laughs> Everything is cool. And I was so excited to start my new job that I never actually ever got to start. So I was redeployed at the same time within the community to do support work. Totally never done this in my life. And I then couldn't work as well. I couldn't teach my fitness classes. And I remember teaching my employer of the fitness side. It's been like, I can't do this. My mental health is so bad. I don't even know what I'm doing in a support work job. You know, I can't do this. So it took me five, well, I suppose the pandemic was March, wasn't it? And um took me till May to actually have the courage to do anything about it. 
Yeah. It's not long now. It wasn't too bad, but I suppose everybody had been like on Zoom and on Facebook Live, like teaching workouts. And I was like, it's not for me. <laughs> Funny that. Three years later, I'm like, that. yep, launching an app. Um, but yeah, I was like, I can't do this, can't do this, can't do it. Never had the confidence to do it. And then obviously I did it. So, yeah. Sometimes it's better not necessarily to be the f- first of the party. Sometimes it's better to sit back, watch people make mistakes, learn and perf- perfect from that. Absolutely. And I think, I don't really, I can't really remember what actually happened like in life at that point. I just, I know that my friend had texted me to say, oh, I've seen, you know, a similar business model. Why don't you like try and run something similar just for the, the ladies that used to come along to my fitness classes? And that's basically all it was supposed to be. It was actually free to start with because I tried to create a Zoom quiz. That's all it was. I was like, I just want to create a Zoom quiz for people. I don't want to teach fitness. Well, I I did, obviously, but I thought, well, maybe if I could get everybody on a Zoom quiz, like all the ladies that used to come along, well, at least that will give us something to do, right? And then it was totally free, this Facebook group. And um, I remember inviting 10 people in. Eventually, I thought, hey, I'll do a workout live. And the funny thing about it is I remember buying our house three years prior to that point and it was very abnormal, our house. It was not like anything we'd seen ever. And I always, I'm quite superstitious now and really do believe things do happen for a reason. And like this was definitely one of them. And our house was three floors and the third floor was a converted attic. And I'll never forget this. I'm not making this up either. Is I remember the house being completely empty, completely gutted, you know, to the point that the previous people that owned it even took every, like everything, blinds, the full shebang, except for one thing. In that attic, there was a cupboard and inside that cupboard, there was a set of dumbbells, I'm not joking. So there was two weights in this cupboard and the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing. So when we moved house in March, they are, that I left those dumbbells in the cupboard. I couldn't take them with me because I was so superstitious about those dumbbells. I was like, no, this is that was that chapter in my life that like they have to stay and give somebody else the good luck that it gave me. So and we had this attic and um who knew that just jumping around in my attic would would have got me to this point. But and that's what it was. There was only 20 members and I thought, okay, well I'll charge everyone a 10 hour because that'll help me get by, you know, like £200 a month, that'll be brilliant, it'll make up for my losses, um, self-employed. And then in eight months, we had a thousand members. And I was like, oh my God, (laughs) oh my God, what am I going to (laughs) do? I'm creating a business and this is really scary. (laughs) And that's how RDF was actually born. Um, Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I love hearing that story. <laughs> it's so funny. And it was called Lockdown Legends when I first started. It wasn't mm-hmm. like called Robin Jump and Fitness. It was just Lockdown Legends because we were legends in lockdown. <laughs> yeah. so, you certainly are. You've turned, turned something that you didn't even want to do into this amazing, incredible business. So mm-hmm. You must be so proud of where you've taken it to. Definitely. I think I think what does make me prouder is the fact that this was more of a self-esteem problem for me. Like I didn't I could I didn't want to do it because I believed I couldn't do it, or I didn't think that I was good enough to do it. Because at that point, Joel Wicks is on our telly, he's doing PE at like 9 a.m. every day. And I'm like, how can I compete with Joel Wicks? You know? And I remember Joe Wicks's classes and all my, you know, the girls on the group chats were like, right, girls, let's go up and do Joe Wicks's 9 a.m. And I'm like, fine. I remember doing this for like 10 minutes and then falling into this pit of like pure crying, being like, this is not a way of life for me. I can't do this. And then and then literally weeks later, I created my own thing. And then here I was teaching everybody in, like <laughs> live. So no, I think the biggest thing for me is the fact that. I suppose we all struggle with that, you know, sometimes still, but I literally did not believe that I could do it, which was probably what held me back to mm-hmm. not start it earlier. Cause I was like, I'm not good enough. I'm not like these other PTs or I'm not like these people. So I can't do it, which was not true, obviously. Um, 
And to see that rapid growth so quickly did reaffirm that there was, I was like, oh yeah, I might actually be quite good at my job, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Did you go through this the thing is, you'll you. Oh, sure. Oh, oh sorry. I was just going to say that you're you and yeah, you may not be them, but they're them. And you bring something different to the party, which is why everyone loves you. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, still can't receive it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, I can get it out. I can't receive it either. Don't worry. Yeah. That's funny. Well, everyone else is, ta- everyone else is already taken. So you might as well be you. Love it. It's so true. And, you know, whenever I was asking for honest feedback as well, and it's one of the best things is honestly, genuinely showing up as you. And and I've never tried to be somebody else either. And I think sometimes what we see from the other kind of professional fitness apps, some of them are not too bad in terms of like showing up as themselves, but like nobody wants to see polished, you know, like people or the videos are perfect. You know, when... (laughs) When I was filming, like, my cat would be running in my videos. Like, Alexa would be in the background saying funny things. And <laughs> it was really funny. So, you know, I think people loved it when it was just being true, real and honest. And, yeah, so that's what people loved about it was just being me. So everyone should do that. Do you think you went on a bit, a bit of a journey to stop comparing yourself to others and start comparing yourself to yourself from the previous day or 100% I cannot explain how much I've left that behind and you know along the way I have encountered some serious kind of local I would say some local problems in terms of like other PTs and like some of the jealousy and the resentment I've faced you know from some people locally which is a shame but then when I think about it I couldn't be any more focused of being like in my own lane like focusing on me, focusing on the members, focusing on the product. So like, I'm really content in that now. Like I wasn't at the beginning and I would be a little bit more compare, compare, compare. Whereas now I'm so content in myself and my ability to do my job that whatever is happening around me does not even concern me in the slightest, which is so good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and sometimes I think maybe like the w- the things I would feel is more maybe I'm not doing enough for them as opposed to allowing what others are doing to affect me. But I definitely did. But I think sometimes comparison isn't the thief of joy. And I think we're so quick to think that comparison can be. And I think that it's almost like we can use comparison in a way to actually help ourselves. Or what is someone doing better than us that I can learn from them or do or how can I be as good as them or and it's I think it's how we reframe comparison as opposed to allow comparison to impact us negatively there's positive things that we can take from comparison um like you know my business mentor like I want to know how she done it I want to learn from her I want to I want to know the secrets you know I want I want to work with people that are better than me because that's how we learn um and I think it does, it takes a lot though for somebody to feel comfortable in themselves to get to that stage of not allowing what others are doing to impact them. Um, Cause yeah, it's not an overnight like transformation to be able to think that. No, it's not easy at all, is it? But no. it's taken me a long time. <laughs> And And it it, still gets me now, but not as much, anywhere near as much as it used to. Definitely. I mean, it's not perfect either. Um, I think that there there are times where it does creep in, like being an instructor, you're a little bit like, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should look a little bit different or the thoughts do sometimes creep in, but then... I do remind myself that 700 women wouldn't still be with me today if like they they buy into me as a whole brand as well like it's the way mm-hmm. that I speak about myself the way I present myself it's the way I'm comfortable with this the way that I am and that's what they buy into as well so you know it's easy to, it's easy like to compare it's so easy to do that 
but you just get better at reframing it when it does creep into your head. It does, yeah. one, one thing I've been working on with my coach is when we've had like one little niggle or one person give some negative feedback and we're so quick to jump on that and be like, oh, the world ended because like one person said this. And then, yeah, my coach always says to me, she's like, so that's one person out of how many? And I'm like, yeah, 100. She's like, well, then that's like 1%. And I'm like, yeah. She went, focus on the 99%, not the 1%. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's so hard, isn't it, though? Like, it is so hard. So I had only launched our app on the app store within 24 hours. And somebody had anonymously left me a one-star review on the app store. <gasps> so and I was like, uh, like, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> no, <laughs> me, is, I was like in the health and fitness charts on Apple until that happened. <sighs> and then, you know, that, that annoyed me for 24 hours and I literally had to let it go. And I was just like, at that point, what's even funnier is the app was only available to my current members. Like it wasn't even available to the wider audience yet. So it would not have been any of my members because I know that they know me to tell me, hey, Robin, like, let's improve this. And I would be so open to feedback. I love having feedback. Genuinely want to know every day how I can improve their service, like all the time. And then, yeah, that one star was like, somebody out there dislikes what I'm doing enough to give me that time. Oh, well, <laughs> at least they know who I am and what I'm doing. <laughs> exactly. And that's their issue. And I think the thing is now, everybody's, the general public are so clued on to things like that. And you can no. spot it a mile off. And you just scroll through and you've got like all five stars and then one. You're like, oh, what on earth are they on about? <laughs> what issue have they got? They have tiny little, like, whatever it is. I'm not going to go into that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's their issue, isn't it? And but it's oh, easy gosh. to see now. Definitely, but we are so <laughs> we can't let just one person's opinion. There wasn't even an opinion; it was one star. There was no, there's not even any words around it. And I was like, "Oh my goodness, someone thinks that I'm terrible and my app is terrible, and it's only been 24 hours." <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> it's so, like it's so easy to think that, isn't it? Yeah. And that's quite cowardly as well, just literally one star and no words, no nothing. That's just like, it's the lowest of the low. I know, that's like, someone just that's like, literally like, nothing. That's probably what they do with their life. Yeah, <laughs> probably. But that's why I suppose we've just got to focus on the aspects that we can control and just let go of anything we can't. We can't control what other people think, what other people say, what other people do, but we can control how we react to it, how we choose to react to it and what we choose to do about it. So. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah, definitely. So what's next? What's next for RDF? Um, I'm going to have, a t- I'm going to have a day off. <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> so you should. <laughs> I need to not have any new ideas for a long time. Time. that would be also a bonus I think Liam my partner would also really appreciate that I didn't come downstairs and be like oh my goodness I've got a new idea already um no I think you know we had the app launch event on Wednesday and it was so wonderful to see so many people in person it was amazing um the app has gone really really great so far we've you know we've seen around 70 new members already with this Sunday so that's a really really big thing so I think it's just I'm quite guilty of wanting to do new things all the time so but what we're going to do is we're going to really really fine-tune all the things that are we're doing already make them really really great and we'll see what happens after that there's there's no there's no plans I don't want to have a plan I hope no Practice thoughts on you for a little while. I'd be like, please don't give me any ideas, Brain, because I don't want them. <laughs> please tell me you have holiday plans, though. Um, you always seem to have such cool holidays. Kind of, yeah. I think I'd love. We need to do that. So, do you know what? We moved house, then created an app. And I cannot believe we've lived in this house for three months. And I, I have no idea where the time has gone. So, but yes, that'll be this year now. Do you know what? I'm just confident now in RDF. And I think that I always kind of spoke about 
having an app. And I don't know if I ever mentioned that to you, Cheryl, on our calls. Yeah. And I always really wanted to do it. And I just I just could never find a way to do it. And I just thought it was far too without, like, you had to have lots of money to do these things. And actually, that's not the case. Like, there was a way, there was a solution. And I think that that goal was achieved so much earlier than I ever anticipated that I'd ever be able to do. I thought that was like my three year plan, not okay, I'm gonna do that in six months. <laughs> so here we are. The app is here. Um yeah, so I think I need to have some time off and enjoy a nice holiday and that's what's next. And hopefully, as they say, you can pour from a empty cup, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um so that's what it's about now. Rest, recovery, and I will come back and everyone will have a great experience because I'll be on my top form. <laughs> love it. Love it. And that's such a positive message as well. Rest, yeah, recharge, to come back on top form. Love it. Definitely. Love it. What a great message to nearly end the episode on. Got the last, <laughs> got the last well, I've got two questions, two more questions. Okay, go for it so first one and we've kind of started asking guests on this season what is your favorite businessy life book that's helped you be mindset yeah mindset. mindset. it was um this is terrible how bad my memory is but ryan hall is it ryan halliday and he is into stoicism. Sto- the, it's not the Daily Stoic. He did a really good one. Oh, I really want to tell everyone what it is. The obstacle is the way. Okay. <laughs> the ancient art of turning adversity to advantage. Honestly, right? I took this book when I went to Ibiza. <laughs> I was lying by the beach in Ibiza reading this book, and people must have thought I was so bizarre. But honestly, it was one of the best books that I have ever read. And stoicism is something that I'm not confident to be able to say exactly what stoicism is, but it's a fantastic philosophical way of thinking. And it's changed so much for me in terms of the way that I work. Like even briefly, for example, when we feel like, when we talk about work-life balance as well, there's that side of balance that sometimes we have to push a little bit further, work a little bit more, a little bit extra that not often we talk about, but it's almost like the reward comes from what we do. And I can't explain it very well, but I would definitely read that. So that's my favorite book ever. And then the second one would be The Success Principles. Loved it. I've got that in my cupboard. I've not read it yet. Really good. I thought it was not going to be great because just the way it looked <laughs> yeah I think that's what's putting me off it's not it's so good so good everybody would love it and you can apply those two books to any area of your life oh, cool thank you we'll link the books in the show notes so everyone can have a 100% recommend read. <laughs> read. Cool. And the final question. it goes on the side for me <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, final question. So, if you wasn't in, I'm going to be really mean now as well. If you wasn't in the fitness space and you wasn't running RDF, what would you be doing? <laughs> uh, definitely running a cat sanctuary. I like I it. it. <laughs> be rehoming all the cats from Greece and I would bring them all here and I would give them homes. Mm. I would save all oh, the cats Greece. from Greece <laughs> because I went to Greece last year and there were so many cats and they were so cute and I want mm. to save them all and I don't stop thinking about it. So that is 100% what I would do. Maybe I might when I'm older. <laughs> Why not? Maybe you might. Why not? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, love it. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Robin. I've really enjoyed chatting with you and even learning even more about you and your story. So it's been really great. Oh, thanks for asking me guys love it thank you thanks for listening we hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please like and subscribe and we'd love to hear your feedback so please do leave us a review or drop us a dm on our instagram at found a life podcast see you in the next episode